Let's come together for the Dream Force Trailblazer Experience, a space dedicated to demos, luminary sessions, and a whole lot of trailblazer love. There will be something for everyone, for every line of business, every industry. You'll see the power of Customer 360 firsthand, share stories of working in a pandemic, and hang out with other awesome trailblazers like yourself, and be entertained by some surprise guests. Join us starting on December 14th for Dream TX. Good morning. I'm Leah McGowan here, and welcome to another one of our live weekly conversations as part of our Leading Through Change series. It's a chance for you to hear from leaders around the world who are doing their best to navigate these challenging times as well as support their communities. Now, before I hand it over to our colleague, Sarah Patterson, I want to preview the next hour. Sarah will be interviewing Fisher and Peichel's Rudy Corey to discuss how they leverage the power of the Salesforce Customer 360 to empower their employees and connect to their customers in more intelligent ways. We'll then dive into a very special demo to highlight how workforce engagement helps contact centers predict demand, staff agencies appropriately, and coach agents in real time from any location with a single source of truth to deliver trusted customer service experiences. After that, we'll be treated to a very special conversation with Stephanie Bashemi and authors of Humor. Seriously, this is going to be good. Get your laugh on. Now, before we begin, make sure you go to dreamforce.com to stay up to date with all of our free publicly available Dreamforce to You 2020 content. Now, for more information on our Leading Through Change Trailblazers, thought leaders, and customers, and to see which Salesforce tools they're using, how they use them, and the benefits they're seeing, visit Leading Through Change on the 360 blog. And as we do every week on Leading Through Change, we want to help those who need it the most. We are committed to doing everything we can to step up to the urgent challenge of slowing down climate change and creating a sustainable, low carbon future for all. We're proud to support American Forests, a nonprofit conservation organization building a reforestation movement in America. And we'd love you to join us. Donate online at salesforce.com slash trees. Again, that's salesforce.com slash trees. Now it's my pleasure to kick it over to a conversation that Sarah Patterson hosted the other day with Fisher's Pycles, Rudy Corey. Enjoy. Thank you, Leah. And thank you all for joining us today. We know that it's a busy time for everyone and we are all juggling far more than we ever expected at home and at work. So we appreciate you all taking the time to be here. No question that it has been an unbelievably challenging year. But the silver lining on this 
has been the amount of digital transformation and reinvention that businesses have done. And one company really stands out on this, and that is Fisher & Paykel. And we are very excited to have here with us today, Rudy Corey, EVP of Marketing and Customer Experience. So Rudy, welcome to Leading Through Change. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for having me on, this is awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. The first thing that we wanted to do is just have you tell us a little bit about how this year has affected your business and how did Salesforce help you through that? Well, what a roller coaster year it's been for a lot of us, um, all of us actually. Uh, you know, we're, we're a global business and have been, you know, going through all sorts of um, ups and downs, uh, not only in, you know, in our home market here in, in New Zealand and, and across Australia, but all around the world in the US and the UK. So it, it's, um, it's, been, it's been a real challenge, but with that challenge has come some really, you know, really good opportunities to, as you say, digitally transform, accelerate, accelerate digital transformation, focus on digital transformation as well. So whilst it's had its challenges, and I know that a lot of people are really struggling, a lot of businesses are really struggling, uh, I think what we're trying to do is um, achieve our full potential and, and be the best people and organization we possibly can. I love that. I personally, my mantra is to just try to be the best person that I can be and do what I can to help others. Um, and I feel like if you live that in your daily life, if you live that in business, that's going to lead you to be able to go down all the right paths, especially in really challenging times. So Rudy, COVID has disrupted many businesses and changed customer behavior in ways that I think will have lasting consequences. What changes have you seen in customer demands? There's definitely been, definitely been some industry changes, but I just want to acknowledge that there's a lot of people suffering and we've got to get behind our friends and family and make sure we look after one another and do what we can to support each other as a community because um, it's been pretty tough. So some businesses have, have really struggled and others um, have done a little bit better. But in terms of the industry changes or what we've seen is there's definitely a focus on making people, making yourself more comfortable at home. So, um, you know, making sure you've got what you need to be comfortable at home in your house because we don't really know how much longer this is going to go on for um, there is definitely beacons of light some positivity around you know treatments and vaccines but you know we as people we haven't been through this before so we don't know is it another three months six months 12 months before things return to to some sort of let's call it normal i'm not sure that's the right word but we get you know, a lot of uncertainty there and definitely a lot of people focusing on making themselves um, comfortable in their houses. I love that. Um, I think as we were talking about a little bit before this, you know, I live in a two bedroom with my husband and our two kids and trying to make this pandemic comfortable has been an ongoing project for us. One that yeah. I wish we were better at, to be honest. Yeah, so, we struggle the same, <laughs> with the same issue. <laughs> I think it's, yeah, I think it's everybody globally, this ties us together. So how has the pandemic affected the way that you organize your service teams, especially yeah. while you are navigating working from home? Yeah, I mean, I think there's two parts for us. There's the, the field service, which was always remote for us. Mm -hmm. And there was a really significant change for that team, even though they were already remote, they've got a whole bunch of new risks and concerns that we never had before. Uh, and so making sure that they're safe, but at the same time, still able to help our customers. And think about how important appliances are to your life right now. Mm -hmm. um, having, having everything in, in really great working order um, is really, really important for people. Being able to preserve your food as, as long as possible, being able to keep your clothes and your house clean, that's really, really critical. So we had to work really hard to make sure those people were safe in their homes, uh, in, in customers' homes, I mean. I and, then the that. and then the second part is our, is our support, the people who support the field, the, co the global contact center, our B2B support teams, B2C customer support, it very much uh, um, working from the office scenario pre, um, pre the start of this year. And we'd always um, 
done some work around remote working. I mean, we've we've done a lot of work in digitizing our customer uh, customer service tool set. So we had people uh, working remotely in places uh, away from our head office, places like Dunedin or California, um, away from our Auckland hub. So we were already used to doing it, but not at, not at scale and not at a very short amount of notice too. That was, um, whilst not unsurprising, but still, uh, you know, we had to respond really, really rapidly. I love that you have the focus on how do you not only help your employees to stay safe and to stay healthy during this time, but how do you then also help by doing that, help your customers to stay safe and healthy during this time. Um, and everything that you've talked about in the world of service has meant that you've changed the way that your teams have worked together. Um, maybe they're collaborating and sharing even more with each other on tips and tricks that they've learned as they're going through this. So can you tell us a little bit about how you are encouraging that collaboration and that training and what tools are you using and what tips do you have for everyone watching today? Okay, well, that's a, that's a really great question. I, um, people, and I think people, and, and especially in our organization, are naturally social and curious. And so they wanted that connection anyway. It definitely wasn't us um, needing to, from a leadership point of view, needing to facilitate that at all. Um, like I said, we, we, uh, well, we use Salesforce as our uh, end, to, you know, end to end in terms of sales service and marketing and, and other areas like digital as well. And so naturally it was just about using those things better and then, and then um, augmenting that with chat platforms so that people could stay connected. Mm -hmm. What was, I think, a really good learning for me was that that we became more asynchronous in our leadership. And what was really neat was to see, you know, team leaders and shift managers um, being able to hand off from one another through these digital tools as effective and maybe sometimes even more effective than in person. And it really, um, you know, really brought everyone together around the customer. Um, more so, I mean, we always were that focus, but it just, uh, made it more visible, I think, is probably the way I would describe it. I love that. I love that you're focusing around that customer experience and using some of those new tools to maybe come up with some ways that um, even when you said, you know, when we are past this moment in time, um, no matter when that happens to be, maybe some of those things you're going to keep in your business. So Definitely. Definitely. this has been a difficult year for everyone what are some of the things that you have been doing to empower your teams through this time? Well, empowerment is the key word there. So, you know, we, we, we arrange our business into, into um, autonomous and empowered teams. Um, and, and that applies in service as well, where we, we want them to be able to make the decision that's right for the customer and for the business. So not, uh, not needing, um, you know, management approval to make those right decisions to get on and 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 just get it done for the for for the customer and for the business. So, taking a look at you know through the pandemic, one of the biggest things has been, and you talked a bit about this, the face of the unknown. How do you run your business in the face of the unknown? And you know, key in the world of customer experience is how do you answer those questions for your, your customers and be there at a moment's notice. And if you think about the need to staff against that and planning for your teams against that, uh, that can be really challenging against the rising and falling case volumes. So how did yeah. you plan for this and how did you face this unknown? Well, I mean, you can't look back in history and, and, and predict what's going to happen. We definitely had to make some assumptions and we took the, took the assumption that, uh, or we centered around prioritizing our customer um, so if there was a risk of, you know, being overstaffed, I think for, for the last six months, we were, we were quite comfortable with that because actually what our focus was putting the customer first and making sure that we could, could help them at this really important time. Um, like I said before, having, having your key appliances in your home running at top performance is really important to us and, and making sure that um, if you need tips and tricks and helps to get the best out of them, that we're here for them. And in saying that, uh, you know, we, we, like other organizations, were disrupted. So we didn't, even though we planned for 
um, more, we still had disruptions. We had, um, you know, other things happen to us. You had supply chain disruptions. We had, um, you know, ransomware disruptions as well. So it was, it was more than just, you know, people working from home and that being disrupted. There was other factors at play. And I think the, the right thing to do was to center around the customer and give the people who were closest to the customer empowerment to quickly make those decisions. The grounding around focusing your entire organization by putting the customer at the center of everything that you're doing and all the decisions you're making is a very powerful way to align um, your entire company. So that's wonderful to hear. And it's wonderful to hear that you were thinking of that, even if it meant you know making the decisions where you might have more people on call at a certain point in time, like if it was for the great customer experience, that was the right decision to make for the company, which yeah. is wonderful to hear. So that kind of leads to thinking of how you're investing in your workforce, because obviously having a workforce um, that is doing well, that provides an even better customer experience. So how yeah. has this raised the priority of how you were thinking about investing in your workforce for now and for the future? A few things that a few things that come to mind for that question, which is there's there's it, making sure that they've got the right tools to serve the customer and to, to be you know most effective. So how, how can we continue um, you know moving legacy systems onto the platform so that it's you know you've got that single pane of glass, you've got that single view of the customer, and you can you can you've got everything you need to help the customer and that's what we're trying to get to. And certainly the last, uh, you know, 10 months has accelerated some of that work and that thinking. So that, that's that been really good. I, don't, I, I think it, it was definitely, um, it definitely drove us to go faster in some areas. The, the other area that I think is worth talking about is not only our own employees, but the digital experiences for our customers as well. So, you know, significant investment um, accelerated investment in things like our website, which you know we we partner with Salesforce with Commerce Cloud to do. Um, you know we rolled out almost 16 fresh digital um, experiences across the world, across our, our brands that we that we look after, um, and then you know more self-service tools for customers as well, so that they can help themselves. So I think it's across all of those dimensions, not just the the people element but a definite, a definite focus on making sure that the, the team has got the right things they need to serve the customer. So it's a focus, it's the team, right? Giving them the right tools, but also making sure that you're surfacing those tools like the right websites for your customer. That's a part of how you're investing in your workforce. Um, I, love, I love that connection, right? Again, it goes back to you're just putting your customer at the center of everything that you're doing and thinking about their experience and using that to guide you. Absolutely. And Sarah, there's, there's more examples than just service in our organize, organization. You know, the way we, the way our B2B sales team, you know, trained their customers are, are you know, amazing resellers and, and builder partners. You know, it was really inspirational to, to watch that as well. You know, finding new ways to connect, to train, to engage, rather than sitting on the sideline, waiting for the world to change. They, they went, well, how can we continue um, servicing our, our partners as best as we could. And it was really, ama you know, really amazing to be part of. That has been a wonderful silver lining as we started off with is that businesses have reinvented so many different processes in this time, right? It's been the necessity, um, it's been the mother of that reinvention. And it's wonderful to hear how you've done that across all of the different aspects of your business. So diving into one final question here, you're in the pilot for our workforce engagement product, which we just launched. What is yep. your wish for how this tool will impact your business? Well, definitely, um, definitely having the right people in the right place. I mean, we've got a really long history with field service management. And so bringing that, that same discipline um, into, into other areas is really important for me. And I think there's a, there's a really good opportunity to have it on platform as well. Again, creating that single pane of glass that I think is really critical for, for making people's work easier. And if you make the employee experience better, I'm a strong believer that the employee experience really translates to a stronger 
um, customer experience as well. And there's there's other there's other areas like you know, um, with that better engagement around the tools and other other things as well. It's not just the tools, of course, but you know that's one one element. But you know, getting that right, you get to you know you keep people longer, more engaged, more loyal, and that's what we're trying to achieve. Well, I think that is a wonderful note and message for us to end this interview on, which is put your customer at the center of everything that you're doing, which is very obvious that Fisher & Paykel is doing, even with by putting your employee at the center of all of the work that you're doing, because having a great employee experience means they're going to have a great and deliver a great customer experience. So Rudy, thank you so much for joining us here today, and thank you for sharing all of these insights. We've really appreciated it. Uh, it was awesome to talk, Sarah. Thanks very much. Thank you. And back over to Yulia. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Rudy. And Rudy, oh my gosh, I love, love, love your kitchen. I also love the idea that, you know, when you invest in your employee experience, it will have an impact on creating an amazing customer experience, a very holistic perspective. So thank you for that amazing conversation. Now I'm excited to hand it off to my colleague, Melissa, to show us the power of workforce engagement and how it helps contact centers predict demands, staff agents appropriately, and coach agents in real time from any location to deliver trusted customer service experiences. Let's check it out. Adam is an operations manager who forecasts work demand to ensure fit for use support center is properly staffed. In this dynamic graph in the center, we can see work volume spikes to date and what is likely to happen in the weeks ahead. Adam is able to quickly generate this forecast with data from Salesforce across support channels, skills, and third-party systems. In the past, Adam would spend lots of time manually entering this data in spreadsheets, but now he can leverage the rich data inside Salesforce and take advantage of built-in AI, saving him time and making it easier than ever to forecast. Let's take a closer look at the graph. Here we see an outlier was automatically flagged due to a demand spike from when fit for you held a sales event. Since it was excluded, Adam has a more reliable forecast. There is a lot of buzz around a new exercise bike that is coming out. Given everyone is shopping online, Adam expects an increase in demand on phone and chat channels. But how does he know this? Because fit for you connects the entire business on Customer360, Adam has a view into activities across sales and marketing, giving him even more insight to build the right forecast. To account for this lift in demand, he clicks on the adjust button to increase his forecast by 10%. Now here's the cool part. This intelligent forecast is learning and making adjustments to provide even more accurate prediction in the future. Now let's look at the heart of the magic, the omnichannel capacity plan. Without a spreadsheet in sight, Adam can figure out his staffing needs across voice, digital channels, bots, and self-service. The graph we see is generated by an AI-powered optimization engine and answers three key questions. First, how many agents are needed? Then, when they are needed? And finally, what skills they should have? Adam now has confidence in his plan, feels ready for the bike launch, and the increase in demand. But wait, a skill gap has been identified where fit for you is understaffed for promotions, but overstaffed for bike assembly. Before, he'd have to manually identify these gaps by combing through data across spreadsheets. But now, these insights are automatically surfaced for him, and he's even given suggestions on how to resolve the gaps. When he takes a look at these suggestions, he is presented with two options, keep the current plan or cross-skill agents. Assessing the impact on service levels and customer satisfaction, Adam chooses the cross-skill option, which will provide career growth opportunities to his agents while achieving his business objectives and customer service goals. Once he selects this option, he has enabled omnichannel routing, which assigns the work to the right agent at the right time. This is the power of workforce engagement, it unites workforce planning, scheduling, and routing to provide next level customer service across all channels. Now let's check in with fit for use service supervisor, Anya. Here we're looking at Omni Supervisor, where Anya can analyze her agent's performance in real time by status, workload, channels, and skills. She identifies Liam, a rockstar agent she will cross skill to fill the expertise gap we saw earlier in Adam's capacity plan. 
Right from the screen, Anya can assign him a relevant module from my trailhead to start his learning journey. And it's routed to Liam right within his agent console. Amazing. Service Cloud is now a single workspace for agents to work, learn, and apply new skills, empowering them to drive and grow their careers and provide better service. After Liam completes the module, he sees a shiny new badge on his personalized agent home. And because agents like Liam are cross-skilling, Adam's staffing plan is now well-balanced against the needs of the business. This is how companies like fit for You can predict customer demands and maintain agility to improve operational and staffing plan accuracy while engaging and empowering service agents, all to give the customer a magical experience. Great demo, Melissa. Thank you. Now, if anything we've learned in 2020 is that we could all use a little levity, a little laughter, and after all, we know laughing is good for the soul. So it is my pleasure to introduce a conversation that our very own Stephanie Bashimi had the other day with book authors of Humor Seriously. Hope you enjoy it and get some good laughs. <laughs> 